Hello everyone, this is Adip. Welcome to my channel Movement Science where I simplify biomechanics with Joe. And in this video, we will be talking about the ligaments that are present at the TMJ joint. And along with that, we will be also covering different movements that are present at the TMJ. Let's get started. Let's look at the ligaments that are present, the other soft tissue structures of the temporomandibular joint. Now as um, na natural for any synovial joint, we have the temporomandibular joint capsule. So the capsule surrounds the joint and then ensures that there is stability. Now other than the capsule, the capsule also has some additional reinforcements in the form of three main uh, ligaments. So the first ligament that I want to discuss here is the um, temporomandibular uh, ligament. As the name suggests, it, it arises from the, it is attached basically, the proximal and distal attachments are on the temporal as well as the mandible, temporal bone and the mandible. And, um, and what it does is it basically checks excessive posterior movement of the mandible, all right. So it checks excessive posterior movement of the mandible and that is the main function of the temporomandibular ligament. Additionally, you have um, two more ligaments that is the, uh, the first ligament that I would like to discuss is the stylomandibular ligament. It basically arises from the styloid process and then is attached to somewhere just superiorly over the angle of the mouth. Okay. And uh, so this is the stylomandibular ligament. It basically arises from the um, styloid process and it is at all also attached to the mandible. So, you, if you look at the direction of the ligament, you can see that it checks excessive again anterior movement of the mandible, all right, which is one of the most common movements that happen during mandibular, I mean, you know, mouth opening, right. So, you have this stylomandibular ligament, which is going to check the excessive anterior movement. Other than that, you have a smaller ligament here, which is the sphenomandibular ligament. It is basically uh, arising from the sphenoid bone, okay, spine of the sphenoid, sphenoid bone and is also attached to the ramus of the mandible. Uh, again, uh, the orientation is such that it checks the anterior movement again and also even depression, okay, uh, downward movement of the mandible. So, it checks uh, two movements here, it checks the forward movement or the anterior movement as well as the uh, inferior movement of the mandible. So, to summarize, you have uh, four main structures that I have discussed here. The temporomandibular joint uh, has the temporomandibular joint capsule, then it has three ligaments. The temporomandibular ligament basically checks posterior movement, okay. And then you have the sphenomandibular and stylomandibular ligament. These two ligaments basically check the anterior and inferior movement, while it's only the temporomandibular movement, which is um, a ligament, which is going to check the uh, posterior movement of the mandible. So when we talk about movements of the temporomandibular joint, um, there are basically um, three movements that we like to discuss. That is mouth opening and closing, uh, then protrusion and retrusion and then lateral deviation of the uh, mandible. I okay. will repeat again, you have mouth opening and closing which is considered as a primary movement. Okay. So, that is that has the largest range of motion and then um, and that is considered as a primary movement and then you have the second movement which is protrusion and retrusion. Uh, protrusion and retrusion basically is when you create a gap between your teeth. So, you move your teeth forward and backwards okay, that is protrusion and retrusion. And then you have lateral deviation where you move the jaw side to side and that uh, is um, again a very minimal movement. Okay. So, the major movement that you uh, that we normally see is mouth opening and closing. Okay. So, let us discuss that now. Uh, for mouth opening and closing, as we have mentioned in the initial, um, um, you know, most of the theory that is there, uh, you know, with respect to, uh, you know, temporomandibular movements are all conceptual uh, framework. So, it is all theoretical and um, sometimes it is, uh, you know, difficult to predict what are the actual movements that are happening. But to simplify it, let us say that, uh, you know, the, the, the joint movements happen in those two joints that I have discussed, right. So, there is a lower joint and then there is an upper joint, okay. There are certain theories which say that the movement first happens in the lower joint and then uh, that is first happens between the disc and the mandible and then later on uh, it happens in the upper joint, okay. So, so first happens at the hinge joint which is the lower joint and then it trans uh, moves upwards and then the movement would happen when you complete the jaw opening. Uh, 
um, so then it happens at the upper joint. Okay. So, when you say mouth opening there is an opening of the um, jaw. So, what let us see what are the movements that happen at the inferior joint. So, at the inferior joint basically there is a rotation of the condyle over the disc. So, it is basically a rotation of the condyle of the mandible over the disc and uh, that is the first movement the primary movement that happens is rotation and then after the rot mandible uh, mandibular condyle has completed its rotation. Now, the disc and the mandibular condyle together will move. So, the as you can see the first movement here is rotation okay, that, that is happening in the lower joint which is the hinge joint and after the mandible and the um, mandible has completed its movement or completed its rotation then the movement the mandible and the disc together will move over the temporal bone okay and that would be pure anterior translation okay so it's a pure translatory movement that happens where the mandible and the disc okay the disc is a structure which is between the joint surfaces will move together on the articular eminence of the temporal bone so there are two movements that are happening here there is a rotation of the um, uh, the uh, condyle of the mandible and that happens at the hinge joint here below and then after the it has been completed then the disc and the mandible together has a forward translation. So, you can see that with rotation there is minimal opening now and with that anterior translation that is happening you have some amount of um, mouth opening that has happened. Okay. So, the first the joint uh, the first movement happens at the lower joint which is the mandibular rotation on the disc then the disc and the mandible together anteriorly translates over the articular uh, eminence which happens in the upper joint. And basically you need to remember here that uh, these uh, uh, once these movements are completed that is when the mouth opening happens. Now, normal mouth opening is when you are able to you know keep two of your PIP joints okay, over the inside the mouth okay, when you are able to fit two PIP joints in your mouth that is considered as normal range of mouth opening. Uh, uh, sometimes you know you will be able to fit three uh, jo uh, three fingers okay but at least two pip joints must uh, fit inside uh, between the teeth to be uh, considering it as a normal range of motion for mouth opening all right so uh, so those are the so that's the primary movement that is mandibular um, or mouth opening and closing and as you can see that these two movements have to happen at the upper and the lower joint. First the lower joint uh, jo joint will move and then the upper joint. Okay. Then there is another theory which says that you know these movements do not happen one after the other. So, as I discussed I initially said that a rotation happens first followed by translation, but there are a lot of people uh, you know a lot of um, um, evidence saying that both of these happen synchronously. That means, uh, the rotation at the lower joint and the translation at the upper joint happen synchronously at the same time and need not happen one after the other. But anyways, um, we need to know that there is some amount of rotation at the condyle and there is some amount of translation at the upper joint and if these movements do not happen properly then the mouth opening will not be complete. Uh, the second movement that we are going to discuss is protrusion and retrusion. So, I will explain it using the same uh, diagram. Okay, so, you have uh, the forward and the backward movement of the teeth. In protrusion the jaw essentially comes forwards. Okay, so, there is a forward movement of the lower jaw and in retrusion the jaw moves backwards. Okay. Basically these are translatory movements, uh, they are minimal movements that happen and, um, and those movements are pure translatory and majority of the movement happens in the upper jaw. Okay. And then the last movement that happens um, uh, in the um, in the temporomandibular joint is lateral deviation something that happens um, it, uh, one of the you know it can happen even while chewing okay but lateral deviation is side to side movement of the jaw so for side to side movement of the jaw you require different movements because it is side to side movements and both the joints are uh, moving that is the right and the left is moving when you say lateral deviation to the right okay the uh, the common movement that happens is that uh, there would be rotation of the right condyle Okay, so, the right mandibular condyle is undergoing rotation okay, and there is for, tr forward translation of the left condyle okay, because it is a reciprocal movement. So, there is a right rotation at the, the right condyle and a translation or a forward translation of the left condyle. 
one right. So, these are very if you consider protrusion, retrusion and lateral deviation these are very minimal movements, but functionally when a person comes with um, comes with TMJ joint pain one of the major movements that we assess is mouth opening and closing because majority of the time patients do complain of uh, pain during these movements or they might have clicks or reduced range of motion the, or uh, the, the problem might be anything. Okay, so, uh, so mostly we evaluate mouth opening and closing.